Greetings, YouTube. You know I get messages just about every day from people that recently downloaded the game. And, and for many of you, including myself, it's kind of hard to remember just how um, it felt to download this game that you knew nothing about and try to figure out who was good, who was bad, you know, what to do, what not to do. I didn't know anything about Link Nodes, Alliance Quest, Alliance War, Parry. Uh, my first mastery setup had to be the worst mastery setup of all time because I think I just put everything in attack because I was like, I, I like to attack, right? So the more points I put into attack, the better I'll do, right? Right? Wrong. So I get asked all the time from beginners, like, I really suck at this game. How do I get better? Or what champs should I target? And so I kind of thought about doing a different kind of video today where I would talk about the six champions through the last couple of years that have really made the game easier for me. Some champions that I wish I'd known more about when I started the game and others just to target. And I'll try to specify through this video whether or not this champ needs to be awakened to be effective. Now, some of the champs are, champs are going to be fairly obvious and you're going to say, well, duh, prof. I'm not going to bring up Blade for the sake of this argument or Hyperion. Uh, my two 565s. I'm going to throw them out and talk mainly about other champions just uh, just to to kind of give it a little more diversity because anybody can be like, yeah, just use Blade and Hyperion and, uh, you know, Corvus and you'll be good. And it's like, uh, I, uh, I get that, but it's tough to pull them. And it was tough to pull like Scarlet Witch and Wolverine and champs like that when uh, the roster was far below 100 champions, and now it's just ballooned, right? It's exploded, and the more champions that come in the game, the harder, as I know from experience trying to get Stark Spidey, it is to target a specific champion that you want. So the first champion that I'm going to talk about today is going to come from the Mystic class, but it may not be someone that you really think about that beginners should want to target because this is a champion that I feel like is deeply disrespected and undervalued by many in the community. And that is my boy and the man Head Shadows boy, Loki. Now you might be wondering, Prof, why are you on the Loki bandwagon? Well, it was, uh, oh, I don't know, about a year or so into playing this game when I got my hands on a Loki, and I was stunned beyond belief that his special one stole buffs. And I wasn't the best at the game. Many will argue, including myself probably, I'm still far from the best at this game. But regardless, I could build up a combo to at least get a special one, or I could get the uh, the crab beaten out of me, so to speak, to get my special meter to special one. But either way, I could get the special one. And so what I realized, especially because back then, Iron Man and Superior Iron Man were very popular on so many paths, even Alliance War. It's hard to believe that, that Iron Man used to be like an Alliance War defender, but it's true. Uh, so I used to bring in Loki, and I would just steal the regeneration buff whenever they started to regen. And what I realized was that Loki was way better for me than many of my other champions, because if I was smart and saved that special one-up, I... Got to save units and health potions and revives because I was just stealing the regeneration buff of my enemies. Now, yes, the game has evolved and there aren't as many opportunities for that, but there still are plenty. And like I said, the uh, MCO Seer Headshadow, who's a great, great Loki player, look him up if you get the chance, has taken him to 565 and continues to dominate and use this guy on nodes like the Buffet node and make it look like child's play. So... Loki is my first champion. If you're new to the game and you pull him, just wait until you're playing a regeneration champion and then do the special one. I also want to say that it's really helpful when you get to a special two at this champion because it is unblockable. And again, when you're starting out, it's kind of tough to know when to use your specials in a combo, when not to. That does take some coordination, believe it or not. And so having a special that's unblockable prevents that timing from having to be perfect and this champion doesn't need to be awakened to have those two really big pluses for beginners come to fruition. So, Loki is the first champ on the list. Now, because we are already filtering ourselves in the Mystic class, I did want to stay with another champion that I think is pretty obvious, but because uh, she was not awakened for me for a very long time, and I learned how to do really good special twos with her, I'm going to go and throw her in much more highly sought after in the community as a whole than Loki. But uh, as some of you may have guessed it, it is 
Magic. Now I'm going to just bring in my four star, even though I do have a awakened five star at rank four. Now Magic is what many still consider to be the best power control champion in the game, and that is because when you look at her special two, you can see that it has a 100% chance to enter a state of limbo, but most importantly, an 85% chance to power lock and a 100% chance to power steal, taking 33% of the enemy's power. So, as long as you become familiar with uh, power stealing and the simple parry mastery that I always tell people to awaken right away, save up the units, do not buy crystals, uh, awaken parry, and the game will become so much easier to you in so many regards on most nodes in the game. So, you know, you parry, you counter, you parry, you counter, you get up to a special two, you do the special two, you rinse and repeat, and that little bit of limbo damage also can give you some health steal, though not a lot. But regardless, it is nice to know that Magic is the champion that is going to make it very easy for you to not push champs to their special three. I got wrecked so many times by Black Widow and Thor and Storm and their special threes where as soon as they hit it, even if you had maxed out Limber, you still weren't surviving. So, uh, so far, just to review, we've talked about Loki, and we've talked about Magic. Now, I am going to bring up a newer champion that I wish I had access to when I was starting out, because um, this maybe still happens to me from time to time, but I'll be in a combo, and I'll lose the combo, or I'll go to intercept, and it won't work. And so there's really nothing to forgive this, but MODOK doesn't need to be awakened to have that auto block. And most importantly, if you transition the auto block to parrying and then using one of the best heavy attacks in the game, which forces at times multiple stacks of incinerate damage, and there are very, very few champions that even to this day are incinerate immune, you are going to be having so much fun with this guy as an attacker. I know Modoc traditionally is viewed as a defender, and I get why. He is a fantastic defender, but I would argue he is a insanely underrated attacker and becomes even more valuable when you haven't played the game for very long and you need a margin of error that's pretty wide when you're in the middle of a fight. So, Modok, a champion that I would target even as a three-star, can do fantastic damage. Now, all of this is building to the idea of learning to parry, which if you are new to the game, parrying simply means a perfectly timed block when the champion hits into you that is a reflect stun. So it goes from being a defensive to offensive maneuver. It is a genius way to gain a defensive to offensive tactic in Marvel Comics contest of champions. I say this to say, this is going to surprise some people, and some people are going to argue with me, but I was really only good at one thing when I got parry, and that was parrying. If I had to intercept, I would die every single time. All I knew how to do was parry. So, because of that, there was one champion that I learned to be really, really good with, because all I had to worry about was charging up my heavy attack and then parrying. And if you just simplify her uh, traits, if you just simplify her code to those two things, charging a heavy and parrying, Quake becomes really easy to play and really fun to play. And yes, for the few Quake haters out there, there are certain nodes that you're not going to want to bring Quake in. But I would argue for most champions, there are certain nodes that they're not going to be the best at. But for the majority of nodes, and especially when you're going up against like Act 1 and Act 2 and Act 3, this champion does not need to be awakened to have this gift. You just uh, go back, charge the heavy. When they hit into you, you parry, you keep charging it. Eventually, you're going to get insane aftershock damage. And as long as you practice those two things, you don't have to worry about anything else. And you get to bypass really annoying things with the aftershock damage, even annoying things like Ultron's evade and regeneration, which can be a problem uh, for me, even sometimes now when I'm just being lazy and I go to intercept and I forget, oh, there's an evade. I've been countered and I'm losing health pretty fast. So, Quake, I know this is going to be a controversial pick for some people, but Quake, as a beginner, if you just open the parry mastery to at least one and learn how to time those blocks and then charge the heavy, you're going to have so much fun because all the all the many things you're going to have to worry about doing with other champions, like charging ahead and counterattacking, you're not going to have to worry about with Quake. You just parry, charge the heavy, parry, charge the heavy, and eventually that champion will die and you will live a very successful, happy life in the game. Now, the... 
Two mutant champions I'm going to focus on for the sake of this video, and yes, I could focus on many, are the champs that have good regeneration. Now, Wolverine does need to be awakened for this to be the case, and you have poor people like Idolist who have been playing the game for three plus years and still haven't awakened their Wolverine because the RNG is so against, and I'm convinced of this, landing a Wolverine in a four-star heal crystal. It was when there was like 60 champs. Now there's like, what, like 160? That might be an exaggeration, but you get the idea. So if you love Wolverine, but you can't awaken your Wolverine, you're going to love X-23 because X-23, while not doing nearly as much regeneration, uh, has fantastic stacks of bleed, has fantastic crits, and doesn't need to be awakened to have her regen really be useful. And so you learn to parry, you go on the offensive, and my advice to beginners when you have champs like this or even like uh, OG Black Panther, other champions that cause you to stack bleed, if you're worried about being hit, if you stacked three or four bleeds, just retreat back and wait for that damage to expire. And when you have, those buffs will have caused an additional 12 to 13% damage. And you'll be so thankful that you have less health to have to take off of your opponent. So Wolverine and X-23 were champions that really benefited me. I didn't awaken my Wolverine for the longest time. I think I had to use like a unit-based awakening gem offer deal to finally awaken him. And then X-23, I awakened in the arena. And that's kind of the first champion that I went full... I didn't see the sun for three days arena level grinding. Now, we've, we've covered Loki, X-23, Wolverine, MODOK, Quake, and Magic. The final champion that I'm going to cover, because I still think he has tremendous value in the game, is certainly like Wolverine, a champion that must be awakened. But this champion single-handedly saved me and made me the person that I am today. I would not have advanced in the game in Labyrinth of Legends, or most of Act 4 and Act 5, and Alliance Quest and Alliance War, if I did not rank up this champion. And uh, another awesome YouTuber, Katie Candy, actually ranked up this champion to 565, so she knows exactly what I'm going to talk about. And that is Mr. Lord of Stars himself, Star-Lord. Now again, he needs to be awakened and he needs to be ideally a high SIG level. And you'll see that I have put so many SIG stones into mine that my five star at rank four is maxed out to level 20, 200, which I think only two of mine are being Star-Lord and Iceman. But the higher Iceman's signature level, the more attack he increases for each hit on the combo meter. And even though they quote unquote nerfed him on patch 12.0, they barely touched him at all. How many of you even need 400 hits in a combo to beat somebody? Or how many of you can get to 400 hits in a combo without being hit? For me, it's happened maybe once or twice, and I am not ashamed to admit that. Maybe some of you in this game can do 800 hits easy, but that is not me, and I'm never going to try to convince you that it is. So besides building up his combo meter and all you have to worry about is that combo meter if you just focus on building it up you are going to be so happy because your damage is going to multiply big time especially when you hit that 11 percent chance for fury which also increases your attack by in this case 767 but obviously if you're a three star or four star it will be far less but a fury uh, increased attack if you can time that with one of the best special twos in the game you will just be stunned how easy it is to beat opponents that are much higher in prestige than you. This is also why, other than maybe Ghost, uh, if you have a Tech Awakening Gym and you have a Star-Lord, and I've gotten this question a lot, and I think it's because we just saw that Awakening Gym 5-star offer in the game. Should I awaken my Star-Lord? Yes, do it yesterday. He is so much fun to play. He's very easy, and he's one of those champions that you don't have to depend on the BS RNG, meaning it's not like you have a... 15% chance or a 10% chance or even a 50% chance to increase your attack. You have a 100% chance to increase your attack by whatever number your Star Lord is at for each hit of the combo meter. And I am somebody who likes to invest in champions that have a guaranteed outcome. I don't like a lot of these new champions, even though they're really hyped up, that you have to store certain things for things to happen or you have to go two or three or four fights in for things to happen. And yes, I guess the uh, exception is Corvus because he can still be really amazing even with zero missions. But for the most part, call me old fashioned. I like champs that have guaranteed outcomes so that I know what I'm bringing in the fight 100% of the time. And this is my list. It is a subjective list. There are going to be people who pretend like I'm trying to say this is the gospel and tell me that, you know, shame on me for having an opinion in the game. This is strictly my opinion. I am not saying that these are the best champions for you. I'm just telling you these are the best champions for myself and champions that I wish when I was starting out I knew their abilities and their ease to play, whether it be Awakened eventually like Star-Lord or Wolverine 
or starting out fresh off the gate unawakened like Loki, X-23, MODOK, Quake, and Magic. So I could go on and on, but I don't want this video to be two hours long. So those are the champions that I wanted to talk about today. I hope this helps beginners. And thank you, as always, for watching and supporting my Marvel Contest of Champions YouTube channel.